this is something. There are a lot of people whose hearts are a little bit ready to follow in the footsteps of something. I don't know what they're looking for. But oh, suddenly into focus came this large bearded aged man who was definitely had been sleeping rough for many a night. And he was asked, what do you think of Mary? Well, he was obviously extremely pleased to be asked. And he said, she cared about the poor and the disabled. And then there was a little pause. And then he said much more emphatically, she was a saint before she died. <laughs> and I thought, good for you. Good for you. This is it. So I just thought, this is, this is maybe a dream I've got. I should have left this in a, in a drawer for six months before I said it out loud, but I'll say it now. I've seen struggles for justice in this world and some of them I've been very close to. And very often it's movements that tap underlying spirituality and the kind of hidden spirit of the people of that land. And somehow those things have shown the way to justice. And they have engaged millions of people around the world in something that's really of the spirit of God. They're, they have to be in harmony with their place. And there have been vibrant examples of that in our time. Look, if you think of Martin Luther King, I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day everybody shall be exalted in every hill and mountain made low and rough places will be made plain. Powerful. Powerful for stirring millions of people. Aung San Suu Kyi, whom I, we both landed in Asia for the first time for the same week as one another, so I've watched her so carefully. Aung San Suu Kyi standing there so serene when she's suffered so much. Blaring her hair. It is not power that corrupts, but fear. Fearlessness may be a gift, but perhaps more precious is the courage acquired through endeavour. Courage that comes from cultivating the habit of refusing to let fear dictate to one's actions. And Maha Bosananda, uh, the Cambodian monk leader who led the Dharma walks every step of prayer, literally through the battlefields and minefields of Cambodia during the Civil War. And uh, oh, this is such a powerful man. I was, I was with him when soldiers knelt down, put down their AK-47s and asked for a water blessing. He was talking of peace. He said, in those who harbour thoughts of blame and vengeance towards others, hatred will never cease. In those who do not harbour blame and vengeance, hatred will surely cease. Hatred is appeased by love. This is the eternal law. This is what I believe. An underground river of spirituality provides the passion for dreams of justice, compassion, courage and forgiveness. And really, it's a dream of the reign of God. It's what we're about. The church is at the service of the reign of God. It's at the reign of God. Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come. This kingdom of justice, compassion, courage, forgiveness. St. Mary of the Cross would say, and she did say, so great is the strength we possess in our unity. And I would say, Hello Australians, what are we going to do with this? The strength that we possess in our unity. We surely need justice in our time, Christopher Fry. Events are now soul size. Mary may have had big problems she was looking at. Look at the problems that we are looking at now. Our time when the very survival of the planet is at risk. Our time when billions of people starve 
while a fraction of the amount spent on arms could overcome world poverty. Our time when ever greater numbers of people flee their country longing for refuge in a safe land, countless millions waiting all their lives to be granted a homeland. Our time when people are sold for money.